Hello traders, my name is John and both Bitcoin and Ethereum are running into very significant support levels. In 8 hours from now, CPI inflation is going to be released in the United States, which is going to heavily influence the markets. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. Let's first go over the United States inflation rate. Here you can see that inflation rate in America has been trending to the downside, which is extremely good as inflation is eating all of your savings. See, the number is going to be released on the 10th of May at GMT 12.30 p.m., which is less than eight hours from now. You can see here that the actual consensus number is 5%, which means everybody is expecting the number to come out at 5%, which would be lower than last month. Now, this consensus number is extremely important because depending if we're above or below this consensus number is going to heavily affect the markets either to the up or the downside. Now, since the consensus number is 5%, if we were to get a number of four or four and a half percent, that would be extremely bullish for markets because that would mean that the rate, the inflation rate is coming out lower than expected and is going to push markets to the upside. But what would happen if we were to get a five and a half or six percent inflation rate compared to consensus? It would mean that that is bearish for markets and you would see a massive drop down in Bitcoin, stocks and many other assets. Although this is not technical analysis, you have to understand that this is core fundamental analysis. The inflation rate is the number one mover and the number one driver in the markets, especially when the number comes out. You see on every single asset class, doesn't matter whether it's crypto or stocks, you're going to see big movement because everybody is trading off of this number. Personally, I really like to exit all of my positions before CPI comes out because this can heavily affect the markets. If this number comes out higher than expected, we're going to have big bearish momentum. And if I'm in a long, I'm just going to get crushed. But if I'm in a short and the number comes out less than expected, I'm also going to get crushed because then we're going to have a big pump to the markets to the upside. So personally, I exit all of my positions right before CPI because I don't want to be guessing. This is just a guessing game as to what number is going to come out. And you don't want these to heavily affect your portfolio while you're trading. Coming over to the Bitcoin chart, again, you can see that we're in this sideways movement. We're not really trending to the upside or trending to the downside. We're actually using this $27,000 per Bitcoin as a support level. And if we were going to break to the downside, we'd need to make a solid movement through this level. And then I would actually expect this area right here to be a really strong support. The reason being is that back in this area back here, you can actually see that we had some strong resistance. We failed to break up. We failed to break up and we came to the downside. But then in this area here, we actually were able to break through. And what happens when resistance is broken through? It actually flips to a support level. And initially, this was a strong resistance. When it flips, it becomes a support. And that's the level that I'd actually be expecting. If we were to get a higher than expected inflation number, this is the area that I actually expect Bitcoin to drop to. And then that would actually be a really solid buying area. Again, the reason being that this would be a solid area. Let's say there's a lot of people right here that actually entered to the short side. They've been holding all the way since back here. They got a really good position and then bam, it came all against them. And you can see that there's there's been really solid movement against. They would be over 22% underwater. Now, what's going to happen when you're actually in a short and you need to exit your short? What needs to happen? You need to buy back your position to actually exit your shorts. So not only are we going to get new entrants entering the market to buy, we're also going to be getting old entrants that are looking to exit their old positions and buy back to get out of their shorts. If we actually scroll in a little bit closer on this daily chart, you can see that Bitcoin is in a form of a symmetrical triangle. We're not able to break to this downside. We're not able to break to the upside. We're coming into converging prices, which actually is this 50-50 pattern. As you can see, using this exponential moving average, we're just traveling to the, to the sideways movement. Through here, we had a really strong push to the upside, and this EMA is signaling to us that we need to be looking to trade to the long side because that's a higher probability. But you can see here, this sideways EMA is actually signaling to us that there is not a lot of bullish momentum, there is not a lot of bearish momentum, and right now we're in that 50-50 sideways market, again shown by this symmetrical triangle. When trading a symmetrical triangle, you can definitely have some price targets. What you do is actually grab 
from the top to the bottom of the symmetrical triangle and then bring it over to the apex of the triangle. As I've explained before, you can break a triangle into thirds right here. And in this last third is where we expect the big breakout to happen. As you can see, that would actually perfectly line up with a bearish movement out of this apex triangle right into this support level that I've been talking about for a long, long time. We would get a one-to-one -one move of this symmetrical triangle to the downside. But what if we actually get really positive inflation numbers? Where can we expect to go? We can actually expect to bring this one-to-one -to, -one to the top side of this triangle. And you can see this would be closer to the $32,000 per Bitcoin. Right there, that would be a movement of over 16% on Bitcoin, either to the top side or 15% to the downside, which is either going to be extremely bullish or extremely bearish. But again, we can't decide yet which one we're going to go with because of this 50-50 price range trading range that we're currently in. You don't want to be predicting prices. You want to be watching the price action. And then once the price action confirms to go to the long side or to the short side, then you get into your trade. You don't want to be predicting now saying, oh, this looks a bit bullish. This looks a bit bearish because that's just incorrect. You can actually see that this exponential moving average is going sideways, which is telling you that there is no bullish or bearish momentum just just yet. And again, even looking at this MACD indicator here, we are having a little bit of bearish momentum, but it's just not extremely strong. As you can see in this area through here, we did have a really strong push on the MACD. But look, we basically got the exact same movement to the downside here, right over here. And look at this tiny movement on the MACD. We're not getting that much volume. It's showing that nobody's really heavily trading to the short side yet. There's not big volume. There's not massive orders. So you need to be careful long or short. Now let's actually take a look at the four hour chart on Bitcoin. As you can see, we had a really strong push to the downside. But what actually happened right in here, you can actually see that there's some bullish momentum. Now, why is this bullish momentum coming through? It's because we're right now in this trading range and we're coming down to a support level. Let's go back here and actually watch how price was actually moving. We had a really strong push to the upside, followed by a really strong push to the downside, followed by a really strong push to the upside, downside, upside. So you can see that price is telling us that we're in a trading range. We're not right now in a breakout level where Bitcoin is breaking to the upside and then continuously breaking up, breaking up, breaking up. You can see we had a really strong break to the upside, then followed by a really strong break to the downside. We have got trading range price action right now, which you have to expect. If we've seen trading range price action in the past, you can only expect trading range price action in the future, which would mean this is actually a decent level to potentially look for a really quick scalp back into this area right here before we then would continue back to the downside. Now, why am I saying that? Because you can see that's what's happened in the past. Big ups, big downs, big ups, big downs. We're not breaking out. We're not breaking down and continuously breaking down. We're not breaking up and continuously breaking up. You need to watch what the price action is telling you. It's now telling me that we've been in a trading range. And what can I expect in the future? If we've been in a trading range, I can only expect trading range price action. I'm not expecting these massive breakouts. So even if I'm looking for the longs or shorts, I need to be in and out quite quickly. I don't want to be holding for days or weeks because we're not in a trending market like we were last month. And again, always in trading, you always want to be buying low and selling high. Right now, you wouldn't want to be selling here because you'd be selling low, looking for lower prices. You'd rather be selling in this area here, coming back down for a retest, potentially even looking for a longs here, back down for a retest to the long side. So you need to be looking at what are we expecting and how are we going to expect it in the future? Before I move over to the Ethereum chart, make sure you like the video and subscribe as I'm releasing daily crypto and trading videos. Now let's move over to Ethereum. You can see that this is a very strong support level. We've came down into this level multiple times and what's happened, we pushed to the upside, pushed to the upside. Like I just said, you wanna be looking to buy low and to sell high. And right now we're in this low area. This isn't where you wanna be looking for shorts because you'd be selling low. You can see here that we're in this trading range and what you wanna be looking is to buy low and sell high. But again, since we're in a trading range and all we've been expecting is trading range price action, you need to expect trading range price action to continue in the future. If you look back here, you can see that the exponential moving average had a really strong upslope on it, which means that every time we come back into this area, this would be a really good buying opportunity. 
opportunity. But what can you see on the EMA currently? The EMA is basically trending sideways. And when we're trending sideways, it means the bulls and bears are extremely even. And you cannot expect a massive trend to just confirm itself right now. You need to wait for the price action to confirm and then say, followed by the EMA, to then say, we're going to get long or we're going to get short. And looking at those CPI numbers is probably going to push us either into that long or short territory. And that's what I'm interested in looking at today. If we're to come down and actually look at the MACD, we can see that the MACD had a really strong push to the downside, which actually correlated with this strong push to the downside. But then let's look here. We had a really strong push to the downside right here in the last few days. But then let's look at the MACD. You can see that we've only had a really tiny movement on the MACD. Now, what does that mean? It means that people are selling, but there's not a lot, not a lot of volume of sellers because when the sellers do end up coming through, the buyers just come through and start to push prices all the way back up. So you can see that the MACD is actually signaling to us again that we're not in that trending market because what you'd expect is this big movement to be potentially bigger than this MACD movement and we're just not getting that follow through. And that follow through means there are quite a lot of buyers and that we're not in that bearish market that you can expect yet. With the CPI numbers, we should see either a big push or a big push to the downside. Looking at Ethereum on the four hour time frame, you can see that every time we came down to this level, we had strong pushes to the upside, came down to this level, came down to this level. And what's happening right now? We actually came into this level and you can see there are a fair amount of buyers coming through. It's not extremely strong yet, but there are buyers coming into the market. Reason being is traders know that continuously, this price has been supportive, has been supportive, has been supportive. And what's happened in the past is expected to happen in the future. If we're just continuously trending to the upside, continuously trending to the upside, then with that, you can only expect upside trending movement. But here, we're having really strong breaks to the upside, really strong breaks to the downside, really strong breaks upside, downside, upside, downside. There is no breakout momentum just yet. We're in that trading range price action and you can only expect trading range price action to continue in the future. But you need to be watching out for these CPI numbers and I'll be tweeting out and I'll be making a video right when all of this has divulged and actually showed us where should we be getting in? Should we be looking for shorts or should we be looking for longs? Right now, if I was, if you were to force me into a position, I would actually be preferring to trade to the long side. Again, this is a really strong support zone and I'd be looking to trade right back into this trading range price action where we are. I'd be looking for longs, come to this side, and then I'd be getting out of my position. Looking for quick longs or quick shorts, depending on if we're at the bottom of the trading range or at the top side of the trading range. Because again, trading range price action means you wanna be in and out quite quickly. We're not trending and continuously pushing to the upside or downside just yet. So you need to be watching what's happened in the past and continuously doing that in the future. And also looking down at this MACD area, you can actually see that we're pulling away from this bearish momentum. We had a really strong bearish momentum here, but it just wasn't followed up by the MACD. The reason being is there are a lot of buyers in that area. But again, since CPI is coming out, I prefer not to be in a trade right now. I'd rather the numbers come out and actually watch the price action to tell me, should I be entering longs? Should I be entering shorts? Because if you're in a position right now and the CPI numbers come out and they're really numbers that you're not expecting, then your position is going to absolutely get crushed because the minute that the CPI numbers come out, you will see big volatility in the crypto markets and in the stock market. That's all I have for you today. Make sure you like the video and subscribe as I'm releasing trading and crypto content every single day.